downloading and installing Zorin Linux. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. So one of the alternatives to Windows that I keep hearing about relatively often is not just Linux, I already have some thoughts on Linux itself, but a specific distribution, Zorin. So what I'm going to do in this video is walk you through downloading it and installing it. I'll be clear, this is not a distribution that I've played much with, so this is as much for me to have a look at what Zorin looks like as it is to show you how the process works. So let's start over in Windows 11. So the easiest way I suspect to find Zorin is of course to simply search for Zorin. They have a very nicely unique name. And if I do that, one of the top results is of course Zorin OS. Zorin.com is the site and we will download Zorin. Now they do have a pro version that actually costs money. There are some additional features, additional support, additional things. But while that might be interesting in the future, that's not where we want to start. We want to start with the traditional free version of the Linux operating system, and that is the Zorin Core for basic use. And we'll click on Download. As it turns out, you don't need to give them your email address, which I appreciate. And the download starts. Now, once again, this is a fairly large download, 3.2 gigabytes, I think it is. So I'm going to uh, pause the video while that happens, and then we'll move on to the next steps. Okay, the download has completed. And if we take a look at the folder that I downloaded it to, which in my case is a shared folder, you can see it right there, the Zorin OS 17.1 core 64-bit version. It is 3.3 gigabytes in size as expected. Now, at this point, the next step will be to boot from this ISO. What that means for you will depend on your machine. If you can boot from a DVD, then my recommendation is that you actually go ahead and burn this ISO to a DVD and then boot your machine from it. If you can't, or you would prefer to have it on a USB stick, you can write it to a USB stick and make it bootable using a tool called Rufus. I'm going to save using Rufus for a separate video, but it is a useful utility for doing exactly that, taking an arbitrary ISO that would normally be a bootable DVD and turning it into a bootable USB stick. With that in mind, what I'm going to do now is simply reboot my machine and boot it from my Zorin ISO. Okay, we have booted from the ISO. As you can see, we have several different options. For beginners, if all you're trying to do is either try out Zorin, or if you actually know you want to install it on your machine, the first option is actually all you'll mostly need. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. What's happening right now is that the operating system is being loaded from the booted media, the, the USB or DVD that you just booted from, and it's actually loading up the Zorin Linux operating system. At this point, it's actually not making any changes to your hardware. This is what's referred to as a live DVD or a live USB. The bottom line is that you can now use Zorin after it's been booted and try it out. See what it looks like. See if it's something that appeals to you. Since it's booting live, it's going to be slower than the normal installed version of Zorin, which is to be expected because it's running off of either your USB stick or your DVD, both of which are going to be slower than your actual internal hard disk or SSD. But as you can see, it is coming up as we speak and we get the option to install it. For what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to try it. We're gonna go ahead and click on Try Zorin OS. And 
here we are. We're in Zorin OS. We are running Linux. You can see that there is something that looks like a start menu, of course, with the Zorin logo. It looks a lot like an old version of the Windows start menu. It's very similar to what we've used in the past, including the All Apps button that allows us to have a long, long list of all the things that are available or would be installed with this version of Linux. We've got the Firefox browser by default. We have a file manager. This is the equivalent of Windows File Explorer. And then we also have what they call software, which is more or less the equivalent to Microsoft Store. If we bring up the file manager, you'll see that, again, it looks more or less like the Windows file manager. We have a home, we have a desktop, we have a documents folder, which is currently empty. We have a downloads folder, which is empty. We have close, maximize, minimize buttons, options, and so on. In the long run, this actually does start to look and feel a little bit more like Windows. Now, like I said, this is a live CD. If we were to shut down Zorin Linux right now, nothing would have changed. If we remove the bootable media, reboot the machine, we'll be booting back into the previously installed operating system, Windows 11 in my case. But if that's not what you want to do, if you are ready to install Zorin on your machine, here's what you need to do. Before you do anything else, take an image backup of your machine. And I realized that would be something we would do before booting this media. I wanted to show you how easy it is to actually just give Zorin a try before we get into the whole installation process. So what I would do right now, if I had not done it already, is I would shut down Zorin, I would reboot into Windows, I would create a complete image backup of that system, and then I would return to booting from the Zorin installation media. The reason is very simple. You may use Zorin or any flavor of Linux for a day, a week, a month, whatever, and you may decide that it's not for you. It may not feel the way you want it to feel. There may be something you can't do with it that you would prefer to go back to Windows to do. That's fine. All you need to do at that point is restore the backup image that you take before you install Zorin. Now, assuming that I have done that, and that I have a backup image I would return to if I didn't like Zorin, then I would click on Install Zorin OS, which is actually a double click, and it begins the installation process. Naturally, one of the first things we need to do is choose what language we're going to do this in. I'll be doing it in English, of course. Same thing for the keyboard layout. Download updates while installing it. Sure, let's make sure we are ending up with the most current version of the operating system. Install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. I generally recommend that you do this. The reason it's a separate item is because the drivers may not necessarily follow the same licensing that the operating system itself would fall under. There are legal and other practical reasons why that's a thing. But for the most part, downloading third-party software is the right thing to do. We'll hit continue. So this particular hard disk already has a copy of Zorin installed on it. It might already have a copy of Windows installed on your machine. What we're going to do is erase this disk and install Zorin OS. It doesn't matter what's on the hard drive. We are going to erase the entire hard drive and then install Zorin OS. This is a warning that you're about to erase everything on that hard drive. You're basically replacing the partitions and the contents of those partitions with a Linux file system which necessitates erasing everything on the hard disk. And we'll say yes. While it's copying files, which is what it's doing right now, we get to choose our time zone, which for me is indeed Pacific. Now we get to choose our username and password. It defaults to a computer name. I have my own naming scheme. If you've been around long enough, you understand that I've been doing that for a while.
My username for these is almost always the same. And yes, that's a weak password. That's because this is in a virtual machine. It's protected actually by the containing machine. Require my password to log in or log in automatically. This is a choice you'll want to make. In my case, since it's a virtual machine, I don't really need an extra step of signing in. But if you want to require a sign in, obviously you can do that. And now it's copying files. And we're installed. Now, at this point, this process took me probably about five to 10 minutes. It really depends heavily on the speed of your internet connection. In addition to having downloaded that big ISO, remember we said install updates, which meant that during the installation process, there was also a lot of downloading going on. At this point, you can continue to test without doing any further work on your uh, machine itself, or you can restart now to boot into your newly installed Zorin. And of course, please remove the installation media. Depending on your system, this may have already happened. Depending on uh, if it's a DVD, they usually do an auto eject. If it's USB, on the other hand, you'll probably need to pull your USB stick out of your machine. And we'll go ahead and press enter. And here we are, we're booted into Zorin OS 17.1 Linux. I'm not going to take the tour, but I suggest that you do so if you've not played with Zorin or Linux at all before. The very first thing I'm going to do, I do this to every new machine that I install here on my um, uh, virtual machines, is I change the display settings to be the resolution that I want, 1920 by 1080. As you can see, the process is very similar to what you would go through in Windows. All I did was right click on the desktop, select display settings as one would. And of course, the size of the desktop was part of several different options associated with the display. But honestly, this is the only thing I really want to change at this point. So a quick, quick run around uh, the operating system. Again, we have a start menu. We have a lot of things already installed. These are categories. You'll see that there are a number of accessories. There are a number of graphics programs. There is internet, Firefox, and a remote desktop program. There is Office. They're calling it Office. It turns out to be LibreOffice, pre-installed on your machine. Sound and video, some things you can do to play audio, music, video, etc. System tools, uh, some of which we may or may not look at shortly. Various utilities, as one runs into on most of the operating systems. Now, you'll notice, of course, that it is already telling me that there are some updates. And indeed, there are. We could take a look at what those updates are. There's not that many of them. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that the installation process didn't catch them. But I'm going to go ahead and say, remind me later. And I'm going to say that simply to demonstrate that Linux in general updates frequently. On the Linux installations I use day to day, it's not uncommon for there to be something to update every day or every other day. But they will not force you to install them. They will not force you to reboot. It's all your choice, which I think is something that is appealing to a lot of Windows users. One of the tools that we did run past was this software updater. That is the tool that was reporting to us that there were some updates available. So I'll go ahead and run that. That would be the rough equivalent to Windows Update. And indeed, it's now showing us the same number of updates we had before, various updates that we can again install now, do it later. And of course, there are settings that allow me to choose when to check for updates, when there are security updates, download and install automatically if you want, but you have the ability to say download automatically or just display them without downloading anything. When there are other updates, you can display however long you want. This actually is one of the things that changes from Linux distribution to Linux distribution, I believe. Bottom line here is that, yeah, we are now running Zorin Linux on your machine. And 
If that is something you're interested in, I suggest you give it a try. Play around with it before installing it to see if it is something even close to what you might be interested in using. If you end up deciding to give it a try for real, back up your machine, take a complete image backup of your Windows installation, and now you've seen how and what it will look like to install Zorin Linux. Hope you find that helpful. Hope you find that interesting. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com slash 172696. I'm Leo Notenboom. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.